Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to 10 minute tutorials today We're gonna to do a quick video on how to build a botnet But how to do it with a better c2 server because I see that a lot of people use byob on my channel and Have a ton of issues. This is a much better c2 server and I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and set it up So first things first I'm not gonna show you guys how to get the payloads to the target because that's a different skill set entirely something different and also that is something that uh, I'll probably do on a patreon type thing because that can be used more maliciously this is simply how to set up covenant which is a free c2 server that is very very good so first things first here's what the dashboard looks like you can see that we can set up listeners so here we would send a payload that sends back a shell to the listener and then it captures it and moves on here you can see that you have different launchers so to start grunts, this is very similar to BYOB where you can send payloads, that's what these launchers are. Grunts are what your actual bots are gonna be called. So these are called grunts. And you can see that you can have them do tasks, you can have graphs, you can actually have different users that can log into this. Here we can see I'm the only user currently. Themes, we can see that we can change it. So if we wanted to, we could change it to heathen mode, which is apparently just a darker color. Um, so we'll just go back to it and we'll say, go ahead can we select this one um no so it's based on user probably so anyway you can see that's what's making my face look so red is because it's so bright in my face right now um but anyway so yeah this is a really really good c2 server and i recommend this for a free version all day long so now let's go ahead and start diving in so first things first you can see here is the Docker that is already running. If you guys don't have Docker installed or don't know how to use Docker, I don't recommend using the Docker method. You can actually go ahead if you want to and, and I'll pull it up here and you can install, this is the GitHub page. You can install it without Docker and you can install it with .NET Core. So just download and install .NET Core the way they show you. And you can actually do it that way if you don't know how to use Docker, but I recommend Docker. It's much cleaner, much easier and much more simple. So first things first, we'll go ahead and get to this page and we'll go ahead and clear this out. So the first, whoops, the first thing we need to do is obviously get covenant, right? So we're going to do the get clone. So get clone and you're just going to say recurse because you want all the actual um, subdirectories and you're going to say sub models and then you're going to go into the website, which is HTTPS, GitHub. Now, none of this is gonna work because I obviously already have it, but I wanna keep this under 10 minutes. So, and then you say covenant, okay? So there you go, that would be it. Now on my machine, you'd have to sudo this, but here is the actual git clone, so on and so forth, okay? And then that would put you into this directory here, my home directory, which has covenant right here. So then all you have to do is you have to CD into covenant and then you can see there's another covenant. So we'd CD covenant. And then from here, you're inside the covenant directory, right? This is where they want you. So now what you're gonna do, since you have Docker set up, is you're gonna do a Docker, and then you're gonna say build, and then tack T for the name of the build, and we're gonna name it covenant. Now you can name this whatever you want, but name it covenant, right? And then you put that period there to end it. So here's the deal. I already have covenant Docker build built, so I don't have to do anything. I can actually just go into it anytime I want, or I can stop it anytime I want, which is awesome. That's why I recommend Docker hundred percent. Like, so watch this in this one here in this terminal, you can see the last command I ran was just Docker start covenant dash AI. So all of these are the errors because I was trying to restart reinstall it because I haven't used covenant on this machine in a long time and it was still saved from that long ago. So you can see if I just did Docker start covenant tech AI, it actually started it right back up with all the same settings, which is awesome. So that means you can just take it down, build it up anytime you want. That's a really, really good feature of, of Docker. So now we're in the covenant. We've got the Docker set up. So we did the build, right? So we did Docker build. Whoops. That's not even words. We did Docker build tack T and then the covenant, right? So that will build it. Now, if I do this now, it's just going to say you already have a Docker build that way. Now you have to be for this next command. You have to be in the correct, um, the, the actual correct path or else this won't work. 
So now you want to do Docker run IT, okay? And I do have a, do a Docker walkthrough you see right here that I built. And um, I'll probably put that on the Patreon or on the um, Google Drive with my notes that the Patreon gets ex gets access to. So that way they can see kind of these commands. But you can also get these commands for free at the GitHub page. But there are some snafus that you might run into, which is what I'm explaining. Like, for instance, if you have it running already or if you already have a Docker with that name, you will actually need to change the name. So now all you do, Docker run TAC IT, TAC P for port. And then the port where they have a use is 7443, and then the colon 7443, and then tac p, and then 80, and then colon 80 for that port, and then tac p. And the reason you see me keep looking over is because my mic's right in the way, so I can't see what I'm typing. Uh, 443, 443. Okay, and then the name. So we already named it Covenant. That's what we're going to name it. Okay, and you can name it whatever you want. And then you're going to say the path. Now, the path is the direct path that your covenant is installed. So what I would what I'm going to do here is go open a new tab and you can see we're in covenant covenant. That's where we want to be. You're looking for the data file. So we need to go one more. So we need to go to covenant covenant. And then that's where we need it. We need the direct path to that CD date or to that data. So I'm going to CD into it and then I'm going to say PWD for present working directory. And you can see I need this direct path. So I would copy this direct path. All right, hopefully it gave it to me. We'll see. I don't think it did. There we go. Copy. And then we go back to here and put that in the actual path. So that's what you need. You need the direct path. And then from there, you just do a colon. And you'll say app data covenant and if you didn't use capitals don't use capitals there okay and there you go when you run that it's going to run a docker instance okay and it's going to run it's going to take a while because docker does take a while and then from there all you have to do is go to your web browser and type in 127.0.0.1.7443 for the port and then it'll ask you to register if it's the first time you've ever registered or it'll ask you to log in with the one that you've already created, which is awesome because like me, I created this a long time ago. It allows me to log right in. So it's perfect. Now keep in mind guys with Docker, there's some things that some good commands that you can do. So now Docker, the, what you can do if you want to re completely restart is like, watch, I'm going to go ahead and stop it. So I'm going to say Docker. Okay. And I'm going to say, stop covenant. And you can see, I got permission denied. That's pretty common with um, parrot. So now I stopped it. Now let's go back to the web browser and let's refresh it. Okay, it's not up. It already stopped. That's how fast Docker can be. Now the other nice thing is, so that stops it, but that doesn't delete it. That just means now Docker is gone. So, or not running right now. So now what we have to do, if we actually want to remove it is Docker remove covenant. And then there you go. Now, and then you could obviously start it all again, or you could actually remove the entire contents of it with um, the same commands we ran before, and that is on the GitHub as well. But I, I want to keep it short for you guys so that you guys understand this is a great C2 server. This is, in my opinion, the best free one out there. Um, Armitage is decent too, but this is the best free one out there. For those of you that don't know how to build a botnet, this is a great learning tool. Now, I know a lot of people, I can already tell, are going to say, you didn't actually teach me to build a botnet. I did. You just, if you don't understand how with the information I just gave you, then that means you're not ready to quite build a botnet yet. Probably and need to do a little bit of um, research on C2 servers because um, the botnet itself has some payloads in it. Um, the C2 server itself does. So that's really nice to get them onto the um, systems. And then on top of it, the system itself is a really good UI for actually controlling those bots and controlling what they do. Now, Covenant, in my opinion, is just is a better free version. BYOB is too buggy. Covenant's not really buggy. Um, if you're not getting a callback for whatever reason for a payload, it may not be the C2 server itself. It may be that that payload doesn't work on that machine. So you may need to find another payload. What I mean by that is 
you can run reverse um, shells from Metasploit, or you can run actual payloads on the machine to take control and then send a reverse shell back to Covenant. You don't have to actually go through and just use their cookie cutter payloads, and that's it. So keep that in mind, guys. I'm not going to. I will show you guys how to get these onto um, machines on my Patreon and on my um, YouTube membership, but that's only because it's it's too risky just putting that much information out there. But there's a million ways to get it out there. You can you could get any payload that does a, a callback and set up on Covenant. So keep that in mind when you guys are doing this. You guys have done CTFs. Most of the people on my channel have. Any of the CTFs where you took over that machine, all you had to do was send a reverse shell back to Covenant, and now you have control of it. That's how a C2 server works. So thank you guys. I kept that as close to 10 minutes as I could, but this is another 10-minute tutorials. Thank you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thanks.